Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at ISC 2016 in Frankfurt, Germany, and today we're at the Asetech booth, and I'm here with Steve Branton. How are you doing today, sir? Very good. We've been reading a lot about liquid cooling and how it's proliferating, but for you guys, I see you as kind of an enabler of that through your OEMs. Right. What's going on there, Steve? So, what we've been doing is a strategy of doing OEM business. So, we provide product to the major OEMs who provide data centers with product so that for the customer everything is integrated into the server uh, from the get-go and that just makes it much easier for customers to deploy our solution. So that's what we're doing. We've actually got four OEMs and those OEMs have got a, a cadre of impressive installations. Cray was our very first OEM. They've actually got installation across the world in Japan, at Mississippi State, and at Sandy International Labs in the U.S. Our next OEM is Format. They're a Polish corporation, and they've got two installations in the uh, in the space in Poland. Penguin Computing is a U.S. OEM. They are uh, doing the Tri Labs with uh, clusters. That's a three-year project where they'll be building hundreds of racks of systems and then finally we have Fujitsu which is originally back in the Fujitsu Siemens so covering both Germany and Japan and they have uh, two major wins this is actually the most recent uh, win for us which is a uh, 8,200 node uh, KNL cluster at uh, University of Tokyo so we're real excited about that that being the first KNL liquid-cooled system. All right, and then one last uh, piece on the OEM products. We have a liquid cooling system available for HPE's Apollo 2000 product. You can talk to HP about getting that product here in the, in the near future. Well, great, Steve. You know, what this, what this speaks to me about is the versatility of what you guys do, because I, I couldn't think of a m more different types of packaging, especially when you get into open compute projects and some of the other, and very large clusters as well. So uh, um, the thing I wanted to ask you about next is, you know, all these new processors and GPUs coming out are very hot, very dense. Do you have solutions there? We do indeed. Let's walk around to the other side here and we'll show those off. One of the things that we see that's driving the market toward liquid cooling is increasing power density of the processors themselves. Initially, we know, you know, when we first started talking, it was all about energy savings and so forth. What we're seeing now is as power, processor power grows, we're going to have data centers that are going to struggle to cool these higher power processors with traditional air cooling. And we think that will be a major driver over the next three years uh, for liquid cooling in general going into the market. We think we're well positioned to participate in that. So we've uh, got coolers for the IBM Power 8, Power 8 Plus, and Power 9 processors. And that's also part of the Open Power project. So it won't be just IBM, it'll be Open Power partners that are providing that kind of equipment. As I mentioned, our, one of our most recent design wins is with the Intel Xeon Phi, the KNL version. And so we're cooling that. We have a very similar processor cooler available for Skylake, very similar package. And then another exciting thing that we have at the show is uh, NVIDIA has just announced their Pascal SXM. And that's this card, which is, is a new form factor for uh, NVIDIA. Previously, they've always used the PCIe card. This card goes right down on the motherboard. And we have a cooler for that. So, cold plate for the, the chip, and then uh, VR cooling and memory cooling uh, all in one. And that's what it looks like when it's sitting on top of the board. So, these are designed to, to go four of these units per one CPU. 300 watts per unit plus another 165 to 250 watts per processor and you get very quickly to a, a very high density um, node. And so we're very excited about that because we think that will really drive the market for liquid cooling as these technologies take off. So I guess just to wrap up here, 
Steve, this, this, this trend of more cores on the chip is only increasing. I think the new uh, Chinese number one system has 260 cores. So just think as that proliferates, how they're gonna need, and they're using water cooling of some kind, by the way, too. So uh, this is exciting to see, and it looks like you are really future-proofed. I mean, you're even offering for, for Power 9 you're ready, something that we won't see for a couple of years. That, that's awesome. Yep. Yeah, yeah it's very exciting. Uh, keeps our engineers good and busy. <laughs> uh, but I think that it really is a position where we have to be able to drive the market um, and meet these densities if we're going to keep HPC growing at the rate that it really needs to grow.